we've traveled up to Rotherham today and we're here at Oracle Precision and they have just invested in a H plus 300 Matsura. They already have a Matsura machine on their shop floor and they've just gone for this one, haven't they, Paul? Yeah, I mean, I tell you what, this H plus 300 is, is a lot different to the MX330 that they've got. Fundamentally, that's a five axis pallet machine. Yes. And now this is a horizontal machining center. So why go for the horizontal? Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because talking to Sean and Ryan here, they did a lot of research into what machine was going to be the best for them and what style of machine was going to be best and why that would be. And really, the horizontal environment here is brilliant for the parts they're machining. They get a great swarf fall away. Originally, the components they're machining on here, which you can hear is cutting in real anger, this machine, um, were being done on verticals, but they were getting swarf issues with uh, you know, the T slots getting clogged up, the not being able to get the swarf out of the machine. Hear and when it. you can hear how much material is being removed here, you need a machine where you can get rid of that swarf quickly. So that's just one reason. But on top of that is that how rigid the machine is. He actually says these are the most rigid machines that he's ever used and also the materials. Yeah, I mean, the rigidity comes from the construction, the base, the column. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you've got a lot of power in the spindle as well. But fundamentally here, they bought this to cut steels, cut harder materials uh, continuously unmanned as well, which is impressive. Well, that's really where impressive. I'm going now because the unmanned run, that's what they were after. First thing that Sean and Ryan both said to me is the pallets, yeah. 15 pallets. Yeah, you've got 15 pallets here. Now, again, this is one of the differences with the MX330. When they got that machine, it was for smaller five axis parts. They've got 10 pallets. Now they've got more. Yes. So more pallets, more runtime, and we've even talked today about some of the fixturing they've been making themselves in order to maximise the working capacity of the machine. So they're putting larger parts on this machine. So they're putting bigger parts, it's got more capacity, hard, hard materials, you can, you can see it. heavier cuts, an 80 mil face mill that they're machining on these parts. They need, and they need to do this you know, throughout the night as well. So sometimes when people run unmanned, they tend to put their, their lighter, um, less tricky components on. But they don't do that here. They can't do that here because no. this machine needs to make the parts in question that we've Let's got Let's go here. back to their work holding as well. What they've done individually, they've got all the tombstones and of course we can have 15, so they can put multiple parts on the tombstones. We'll go all the way around, there's a tombstone here, but they've made that themselves. They had it, they went over quite a, shall we say, a mountain to get to the place where they, they are They now. wanted to develop their own tombstones because they wanted to maximise what they can get per yes. pallet. They didn't want to be restricted by buying something maybe off the shelf which couldn't get as many components on if they made it themselves. That was their argument to making them themselves. Well, they're engineers, you they're know, engineers that's what they, they do best. They, they do, they do, and when you see some of the the, the, the amount of components they are getting onto the machine or onto the fixture in it is, it is impressive. Now, tooling, there's 120 tools, is that right? Well, you can go up to 520 on this machine. They can That's add the to key. it. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how many they've got on here. Maybe 120, maybe 180. I think, there's a um, is it, I think it's 120 at the moment, but I then think. they can add down in this area as well. And I'll let you go down there I'm on your own. I'm a bit tight down here. Can Paul well. squeeze down? Can't but squeeze yeah, down together. But yeah, you can add more tools. But of course, you need more tools because you're going to be running more components. And when you when you, you, you have more tools, you generally do it because you might want sister tooling. Yep. You know, when you see what they're doing in here, they may they may have a, an issue with the tool running at night. I mean, it happens. You know, you can't cut steel continuously and not expect to ever, you know, have an obstacle where a tool breaks or a tool wears. So but the more tools you've got, you can obviously have sister tooling. And the clever thing about what we've got here with the Matsura control, the Matsura rim software, is everything's monitored. This is so exciting. They're, they're remotely told out of hours what's happening with the machine, yep. what, what the run times are, the productivity, the efficiency, but also the, the intelligence of the system this means is really that impressive. if there, it, something happens at night and a tool breaks and they wanted to do pallet six or pallet seven, it will go to pallet eight or pallet nine and everything will be communicated to the control so you can just skip a component or skip a job. Previous to all of this, you would have the machine stop. And then you, you would literally, all your lights out running, everything you planned for the weekend is gone. And now it's scheduling everything for you. I've been there. I've been in, in a machine shop where I, I've, I've literally come in in the morning and the, something's happened at three in the morning. You've yep. lost four, five hours of production, which when you look at, you know, investment in these machines is not cheap. It isn't cheap. The, five, no. the, the 330, it's not a cheap machine to buy. But what you're buying and what you're paying for is, is the unmanned efficiency. Mm -hmm. It's keeping the spindle going continuously. 
but making reliably um, precise components and that's what they've achieved. Also just speaking to Sean as well, the one key component, in fact I think it was the first thing that he said to us, was service and support and reliability and he said we've had it with our first Matsura and that's why they've gone for Matsura again. They've got faith in Matsura it, as a brand. It took them down the path. I think it was really pertinent or poignant, whatever the word is, for to oh. hear from them that they that their customers are their partners, but also their providers or their suppliers are their yes. partners as well. You know, you, you're not going out to buy a machine and negotiate to the to the nth degree to get the best deal. Okay, you do mm -hmm. want that, but at the same time, you need to be assured that this thing does keep going in the in the times when you need it and, and making reliable parts, and that's what it does. We cannot stress enough how impressed this team here are by this machine. And, and I think I would add as well to that is the horizontal environment, something that's well overlooked in this country. Tony Gunn in the, in the United States for working for MTD CNC, he is coming across a lot more horizontal machines in yep. subcon shops than we are, which is surprising because we need to see more horizontals around. You know, you can still hit multiple faces. You run them unmanned overnight. You have the advantages of the swarf fall away, heavier parts, heavier components. Um, the construction of the machines is different to, to give you maybe faster metal removal rates. So you've got all these things that make horizontal machines very, very attractive. And it's great to see one here um, in action at Oracle Precision. Do you think they'll buy another one? I think they will. I think they will if they can get the space because they're pretty crammed in here. They've got about 20 machines in here, but I'm sure they would. Absolutely. Um, I agree.